Hello and welcome to Ariva Academy Online Administration Webinar. My name is Manny and I'll be your trainer for today's session, Getting Started with Exceed Further Report Builder. You can find these recorded sessions by heading to ariva.com and selecting services in the main menu and then select an academy from the drop down menu. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, before we get started with the walkthrough, there are a couple key things to point out and um, to review on the report builder before we go ahead and get started. The first one is that the report builder is available to everyone today with super user access and can be granted to any other roles, users that would like to use and uh, utilize the report builder functions. So if you're not seeing it today, of course, just check with your super admins, super users, and they will be able to grant you that report builder access right away. Uh, report Builder is available for all Exceed Further clients. So if you have Exceed Further and you're not seeing it, of course, just reach out. We'll make sure we guide you and get you all set up. Report Builder is designed, um, designed around power users who understand their database, but it is also available for users of all skill levels. Uh, it has the ability to set up graphs, export to PDF, includes UDFs, UD totals, and other great data fields as well. This will not be put, replaced in my reports, but it is an additional tool offering more insight into your existing data. It is there to minimize the, the need for custom reports. And a lot of times you'll be able to solve your needs through this report builder, which is gonna be great. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're gonna do is head directly to the report builder. It is located right here on the left-hand side under reports. And you're just gonna go ahead and simply select it. As soon as you select it, you'll be able to go ahead and see a listing of already existing reports that you have. And these are going to be your reports you created, as well as reports that have been shared to you from others. So you're going to see in the permission section, you're able to share a report when needed, which is fantastic. And, uh, you know, you can create one and then share it off to colleagues who need to utilize. There is the ability to export directly from here as well or within the report itself, which is awesome. All right. To edit a report, we can just highlight the report and say open edit. To create the new report, we're just going to go ahead and say new report to get started. The first thing we're going to see here is the name, which is going to be the name of the report for us and of course for our colleagues when we share off. The description is internal for them as well. So, you know, if you have a nice little description of what this report is, and then the type is the most important part here on the report builder, as this is going to give you the breakdown of what different types of reports you can build. And this is gonna bring in different fields, you know, membership fields, event fields when needed, gift fields when needed, or just bio fields. So today we're gonna to focus on gift reports and we're gonna go ahead and create a 2022 gift report. Um, and we're gonna say fund and method breakdown because we're gonna create some nice graphs that uh, show that fund and method breakdown. All right. All right, awesome. What we can do is go ahead and break down. Oops, I'm using graphs. All right, so our colleagues know exactly what this is for. And then we can go ahead and just say start design. And as soon as we do, we're going to be brought directly into the report builder. And we can go ahead and get started right away. Before we do, we're just going to review the right-hand side menu, as this is where everything is going to be handled from our options to save and export to where we're going to create our report columns, as well as our filters and how we're going to filter the report. So starting from top to bottom, the first option is save. And save is just that, the ability to save this report. And of course, you know, come back and edit it later. Save as is a great option, giving you the ability to do a save as, you know, save the current report you're utilizing as a new report and start making changes right away, which is great. Schedule report will allow you to schedule the report as well, specifically this report builder report we're building, which is fantastic. You can see within there works similar to the other schedule reports that we have as well. Permissions is there as the ability for you to share this report out to your colleagues. So again, once you build it, you can share it. Or of course, you can share it along the way as well if you wanted them to partake and uh, you know being able to edit. So you can see a list of colleagues right here. We can select which ones we want this to be available, available for, click save, and then we are good to go. They'll be able to see it right there in the report builder listing. Delete report, self-explanatory there, ability to delete the report we are currently using. And of course, export to Excel, CSV, and PDF. 
Important thing to note for the graphs to be exported, it is going to be PDF only. CSV and Excel will bring your nice data, you know, into format, into Excel format, but it will not bring the graph. So if you do want your graphs you're creating, make sure to export as a PDF. All right, as we keep going down, this is going to be our columns and where we create our actual report itself. So this is going to be our first option that we set up. So we're going to use entity name here. And as you see, as soon as we use this type ahead field, we can, uh, of course, search through the list or use the type ahead field to make it nice and easy to find that field we're looking for. And once we add it to our column, immediately it's going to show up in our first report here, first data set. And we're going to be able to keep on making updates and get this to where we need it to be. Down below, we have our UDFs and tags, as well as our metric here, which is gonna be used for our graphing purposes and our grouping. Our filter is gonna be our, the ability to actually filter this report to what we need. So 2022 gifts only is what we're looking at here. And then of course, our UDF and tags filter, if needed, it is there nice and optional. All right, so I'm gonna add a couple more fields so you can see this report being built in real time. And we're just gonna go ahead and say gift date. Uh, that's a great one. And then we're gonna do fund. So we want all the great fields. And we'll do description. Of course, you guys may know your codes better and like the shorter version. No problem. Just do code if you like that. For us, uh, reason name, reason fund description, a little bit bigger, bolder, uh, you know, easier to see for us. Method is going to be the type of gift. So check, credit card, you know, all that great stuff. And then the amount of the gift, um, exactly how much they gave. So we can see right away, we have now pulled a report. A uh, nice data set here, and we can expand our table and drag it around as we need. And immediately we have our 2,700 records, and we're just showing our recent five, but we can show all 500 if we want. And when we export it, of course, export all records in the data set. And immediately we have our nice report ready to go. Uh, so the next thing we can take a look at down below is the actual metric, which we're going to use to create our graphs. Um, before we do, there are some nice options in the toolbox right here that you can start making changes and adjustments and sort as well uh, to these options in these headers. So right away we have gift date and maybe we wanna sort by, you know, ascend and gift date, great. We can go ahead and say sort order and switch it up. And if we wanna go the opposite route as well, you know, we can go gift date descending, which is great. And then perfect gift date descending, apply changes. And immediately here you can see now we are going, you know, newest gift first, which is fantastic. All right, so as we keep on scrolling down now, we have our metric option, which we are going to use in a second to create our nice graphs. From here, we could, of course, export um, if we wanted to, as this is all GIFs currently, um, but we do need to add a filter, which is great. So we'll go ahead and say filter, and this filter is going to be by gift date as well. Nice and easy. We said last year's GIFs. So we'll say a range. Of course, we have all our other nice options as well, very similar to other reports. And it defaults to our current fiscal year, uh, which this current data set is, is last year's date. Of course, we could do last fiscal year as well, um, you know, which is going to work for you guys. We'll say apply filter. And right away now we have 668 gifts that have pulled in that are just for the you know, year 2022, specifically set on our filter here. So now to create our graphs from this grid or from this data set, what we can do is just create a clone of this table. And what that's gonna do is allow us to just have a nice simple data set here that we can start editing and not mess with our current nice filtered data set we have available. So here we can just click on our data set and you can see the data you are in, the graph you're in, the data set you are in is kind of designed here by this gray bar, which is going to be green when you guys see it on final release. So you'll have a nice green bar available, kind of letting you know, hey, this is the data set you're in, and these are the columns you're editing on the right. You can see if I click the other one, it highlights and lets us know right away that that is the data we're editing over here. So we'll go back to our uh, kind of small table over here. And what we're going to do is just add a metric. And the metric we're going to add is amount. And we are going to do it by reason name. Uh, sorry, you know what? Let's do amount. Apologize. And I said fund and method. It could be reason if we want it, of course. And we'll say fund. And now we have our group by fund. And right away, we can generate a chart. If we did not have this metric, it would let us know that we do need it. And um, we can, of course, come back and add it. No problem. So now we'll say generate chart. We get our nice little wizard here that pops up. 
and we get to pick the chart that we want. So the first chart we're going to do is a pie chart, and the second we'll do is a donut. All right, so we'll say next here, and then right away, it is going to be fund, just like we set up our metric to be. And then we're going to say gift amount and say finish. And right away, we get our graph, our nice pie chart that we can add and drag out as we need and make it exactly how we want for our nice exportable grid. Perfect. So there we go. We are good to go. And there is our first chart. Now what we can do is click back over to our, you know, edit option and our, our first data set we were using. And we're going to change this gift amount metric back to amount. But it is going to be for method this time. So the type of payment we're going to sort by. And again, we're just going to click on our generate chart. Next, it's going to be a donut this time, just to show you the differences. Here's our method name gift amount and finish. And now we have our chart added right here for our different amounts, which is great, or our different methods. We can simply delete this as we don't need it anymore. Um, you know, it's just our kind of sample set we were using and we'll drag our graphs out so we can make this a little bit bigger here and get our tables how we need them. All right, now you can hide information on these tables as you guys see fit by just simply selecting and it will hide those data sets as you're seeing right away so if you don't want to utilize a certain piece no problem at all it is absolutely great and possible to uh, hide what is not needed as well another important tip here is the settings option is available and we can change the title of these so method chart apply and of course it was set to print we'll go settings over here and this one was our fun chart all right, awesome. We have our other options in here, such as colors, the amount of plots we can register and all that great stuff there. And right away, we now have our uh, data sets available, which is our last year's 2022 gifts. And then of course, just taking a look here, we have our nice breakdown of our method and our fun breakdown for those gifts available. Uh, you can see we have some nice, um, you know, very nice graphs available that are gonna be exportable to PDF when we want. As well, our data set will, will be exportable to Excel and CSV as needed, which is great. All right, so a couple important things to note um, before we save this is um, the movement and the availability to move these options around is just simply left click and drag in them, right? You just kind of drag these data sets, these graphs where you would like them. So just depending on your needs, you can go ahead and set this up how you guys want it. Uh, also remember the nice options above, such as the settings, so you can kind of change the labels, as well as a couple nice options such as header, body style, fonts, and great things like that, which is wonderful. All right, you also have the option to show and expand the data set you're currently seeing. So of course, we always start with a small sample, keep things moving quickly, and then you can always expand to the full set as you need up to 500 and be able to filter through. Right. Um, as I mentioned before, an active data table, an active data set or graph is designed with the gray bar or green bar, as you guys will be seeing it throughout your report builder. And uh, that just lets us know that, of course, this is the data that we're editing on over here on the right. So you can see exactly that breakdown, exactly what these graphs are made out of and how that is being created. And of course, add or take away to just that simple graph if needed. All right, how Report Builder is really designed, it is one report with several data tables. So as you have different sets of data tables in them, it will export all the data in a singular report, but it does show you kind of the breakdown between the two data sets. All right, and one last important thing to know is when we save and we exit our Report Builder, it is always going to refresh our tables when heading back in. So in case there are any past gifts added, you know, it is going to go ahead and continuously refresh those gift, refresh these tables to ensure that that data is the most up to date based on those filters that you guys are setting. All right, so now we have our nice new uh, report, 2022 gift report, fund and method. So we have that saved, which is great. And of course, we can go ahead and close out and it is available right here for us so that we can utilize, edit, you know, change as we need. And always remember when we're ready to share it out to our individual you know, colleagues and individuals who need it, we can immediately come back in and you can see it's refreshing. So you just kind of kind of build your tables as you need. And we can go ahead and head to that permissions, make it public for others and share to our colleagues that will need it available right away. So we can go ahead and say, yep, edit, save. And now David will also be able to uh, access this option and uh, edit and use and export as he needs, which is fantastic. 
All right, that is it for our report builder. As I said, if you guys have any questions, uh, need any help with reports, um, reach out to us at support at Ariva.com as well as option one on the 1-800 number for the uh, database team. All right, thanks so much and have a great day.